Please turn off your cell phones if you have them or put them on mute, vibrate, something like that, please. Residents and guests, welcome to our dedication ceremony today. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mrs. Marissa Lufkin, GL Homes Project Manager and Vice President. Ms. Lufkin. Thank you everyone. Thank you for coming today. We had such a major turnout. I think we expected about 100 residents to attend and I think you guys have at least doubled that. So happy Memorial Day. Today is an amazing day. Not only do we get to grand open this phenomenal recreational area, but we have the honor of dedicating the Circle of Honor. The residents of Valencia Lakes have two very special neighbors to thank. Peter Adams and Nick Fazio. Nick and Peter came into my office a few years ago with a very big idea. They wanted to create the Circle of Honor, a place for reflection, a place to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Their idea was simple. They wanted to have GL Homes loan them the money to build this Circle of Honor. And they had a whole plan in place, and they came with photographs and a construction plans, and they had done all the research. We thought it was such an amazing idea and such an interesting addition to the recreational amenities. And with such a large constituency of veterans living in the community, we thought it would be the perfect addition to the site. So we didn't lend them the money. We built it. <laughs> couldn't be more proud of everything that we've done and everything that they've brought to the table. They worked very, very closely with our construction team and David Schmidt, our contracts manager, to go over every single detail and to make sure that this was the perfect place. So it is with great honor and privilege that I officially turn over and dedicate the Circle of Honor to the residents of Valencia Lakes. Thank you. Marissa, as president of Valencia Lakes Military Veterans Club, on behalf of our membership, it is my privilege and honor to be entrusted with GL Homes' first ever Memorial Veterans Park. Thank you. Thank you. you please all rise, remove your hats for the invocation, and remain standing for the presentation of the colors and the national anthem will be sung by the Valencia Lakes Singers. <coughs> Chaplain Nora. Good morning. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious God, God of our fathers, whose almighty hand has protected our nation, secured our liberties, blessed our people, we gather on this glorious Memorial Day morning in this wonderful new recreation area with a special space set aside to honor our veterans, to bow in humble gratitude for the precious gifts of freedom, liberty, devotion to duty, and sacrifice. Sacred scripture reminds us that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And on this day, we pause to remember the many blessings, our liberties, our rights that have been secured by the great and costly sacrifice of others. The incredible gifts that we enjoy daily as Americans and as members of our Valencia Lake community are ours today because of selfless acts of valor paid for by the fallen heroes and those that have faithfully served our nation. May this circle of honor and remembrance serve as a fitting place to help us remember the great sacrifice of those that have served and gained so much for us. Here may we find a place to remember a place to be good stewards of the inheritance of freedom. 
And today we also lift up our prayers to you on behalf of our nation's men and women who serve even now in uniform, who have pledged their lives to defend our great nation against all enemies of evil and terror in our world. Grant them courage, perseverance, moral clarity in the midst of a complex and dangerous environment. Protect them by your mighty hands. And O oh God, on this Memorial Day, we also ask you to comfort, console, and strengthen those who mourn the loss of loved ones. May this Memorial Day ceremony be an appropriate tribute to honor the valor sacrifices made by them and the generations before us. And now, O oh God, we ask that you would continue to bless the United States of America, guide her in the paths of liberty and justice for all people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. The Defense Authorization Act of 2009 authorizes veterans to render hand salutes whether in or outdoors, in uniform or without. All the others, please uh, place your right hand over your heart. Color guard, present the uh, colors.
<laughs> Sir, permission to post the color. Post the colors. Post the colors. Please be seated. <coughs> Today, Memorial Day, Monday, May 27th, 2000. 13, we dedicate the Valencia Lakes Military Veterans Park Circle of Honor. Its purpose is to honor all military veterans and their families, past, present, and future, for their sacrifices endured in providing us the very freedom and security we enjoy in our daily lives. As a community, we extend our sincerest, humble, and thank you. Our gratitude to GL Homes for erecting the Memorial Park in our community. Next on the agenda, Mr. Pierre Jolly is a Valencia Lakes resident and member of the Valencia Lakes Military Veterans Club. Mr. Jolie is a retired Chief Warrant Officer for, most recently retired as the Chief of the Defense Intelligence Agency, Senior Executive Service. He served over 37 years worldwide in the intelligence community. Pierre has several master's degrees. He's compiled numerous military and VIA civilian awards, including the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star, Vietnam Cross of Gallantry with Palm Device, the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal with four oak leaf clusters, the Army Achievement Medal, the DIA Meritorious Civilian Service in 1991, the DCI Collector of the Year Award in 1992, the NATO Balkans Service Medal in 2001, the Armed Forces Civilian Service Medal in 2001, the DIA Director's Award in 2002 and 2006, and the DIA Civilian Expedi Expeditionary Medal, Iraq, in 2005. It is my pleasure to bring Mr. Jolly up to the podium to introduce our guest speaker. service that they, they give to our country and, and uh, the tradition of service is something that uh, over the years has been hallmark of our great nation and our neighbors, our friends, our families, uh, especially our generation. Uh, we still had the draft and so many of us were called, whether we liked it or not, to, to serve and, and to deploy and go overseas and as the draft was abolished, our families, many of our families, have continued 
to serve have continued the tradition to volunteer to help protect our great nation. And so today, uh, we, we honor those folks that have chosen to serve and uh, our and all of our, our families, uh, all of us have relatives. You all know somebody that has served, is serving a cousin, a nephew, a brother, a sister. And so today we want to honor this, these folks and, and their service. And particularly for me, it's a great honor that today my son agreed to come down from Washington to give us the address on the meaning of Memorial Day and what it means to our military and what it means to our country. And so with no further ado, I'd like to introduce my son, Lieutenant Colonel Sebastian Jolie. I'd like to thank you for inviting me to join you today during this Memorial Day Remembrance and dedication for the Valencia Lakes Military Veterans Park Circle of Honor. Let me begin by asking all the veterans and the Gold Star families in the audience to either stand or raise your hand. You're each hero. Thank you deeply for your service. I think those men and women who, so long ago, imagine this holiday we now call Memorial Day, knew what they were doing when they designated this time of year as our time to honor the fallen. It is a time of renewal and strength after a winter of loss and silence. They must have imagined all the flowers in bloom, a million or more, representing those lost in battle here and on almost every continent around the globe. They must have imagined the opportunity to tell the stories of the past to the American people who will pass these stories on to the children of tomorrow. The flowers of the season are beginning to break through hallowed ground and remind us to honor those sleeping the long good night beneath it. Ever so resiliently, the flowers are peeking through the earth and proclaiming with their bright colors and their fragrance that there is hope in the face of hardship and there is life to be remembered. These annual monuments that grow from nothing would not be stopped this year in their mission to announce the day we honor the men and women, sons and daughters of this nation who gave their lives in her defense. We too must take our cue from these symbols of growth and proclaim today a day to tell the story of a soldier who is no longer able to smell the sense of spring. Today, I want to spend our time together reflecting on the stories of soldiers who died for our nation's cause, some in combat and some after a life long lived in uniform. Their stories are the stories of this nation and they deserve to be heard, remembered and honored on Memorial Day and beyond. Before we honor those most extraordinary heroes as is tradition today, let us acknowledge the men and women who died for this country after a life of service too. People who will not make the pages of history, but who nevertheless require our respect and homage. The memorial we dedicate today is such a place that allows us to honor those Americans who have devoted a lifetime of service and sacrificed so much for this great country. Today, we gather at cemeteries all over the country, march and parades in cities big and small, from California to Florida, and we watch the annual Memorial Day events on television. We do these things to honor the loyalty and bravery of our fallen in this noble calling, military service. While this day is typically spent recalling the valor of men and women who died in combat, we must never forget those quiet professionals who answered that noble calling to serve the people of the United States. Their passing didn't make headlines, but their lives and profound sense of duty and patriotism will resonate with the soldiers they met and trained, the missions they executed with dedication, and the families they left behind. It's the crusty drill sergeant who barked orders so the, so the recruits could learn how to handle stress. It's the sergeant who helped a new soldier mend a troubled marriage. It's the chaplain who listened to and comforted a warrior who had just lost a battle buddy. These are the nameless heroes, but to their families who live and die each day without want of recognition, who we are obligated to remember. They die in nursing homes and hospitals everywhere, every day. The fact that they did not die in battle does not diminish our responsibility as citizens of this great nation to show our respect for their service. It is not where they died that matters. It is their life 
given over to the greater good of the nation and defines their legacy. It's the years at a time deployed, separated from family, in austere conditions and in unfamiliar lands that make them our heroes. These men and women too must be honored today and beyond. I want to share a story of one of these most extraordinary people to wear the army uniform, an ordinary person who knew the price of freedom but was prepared to pay it. Army chaplain, Captain Emil Cuppin, grew up on a farm in Pilsen, Kansas. His first calling was to God, who he believed called him to military service, so he joined the army. Cuppin was sent to Korea in 1950 to provide comfort and counsel to the troops as a chaplain during the first months of the Korean War. The soldiers quickly realized he was so much more than a chaplain. He was their soldier saint. On All Saints Day, his unit came under heavy attack by Chinese forces that until that time, no one thought would enter into the Korean conflict. The Chinese forces devastated the American lines into the night and on through the next day. Cuppin had the chance to fall back to safety with a portion of his unit, but he chose to stay in the thick of the battle to minister to the dying and to aid the wounded. He would repeatedly brave a barrage of bullets bounding from foxhole to foxhole to check on his boys. Over and over, he risked his life to retrieve the wounded or the bodies of the fallen. When the wounded were beyond saving, he gave them spiritual comfort. One soldier from that battlefield says it was a miracle he's still alive today, but for the actions of Chaplain Cuppin. Despite finally being captured and in the midst of being marched away by a Chinese soldier at gunpoint, Cuppin saw an enemy soldier with his weapon drawn and moments away from executing an American soldier, Sergeant First Class Herbert Miller. Cuppin defiantly left his captor, pushed the enemy soldier to the ground, and picked Sergeant Miller up from the ditch. The enemy troops were too stunned to react. Cuppin and Miller spent the remainder of their time in the war interned in a prisoner of war camp in North Korea. Cuppin died there in 1951. He was posthumously presented the Medal of Honor by the President at the White House on April 12th of this year. <coughs> What's amazing about this story is Cuppin did not shoulder a rifle or wield a bayonet. He carried a Bible and holy water. These were the weapons he used in battle, and they were more effective than the bullets of a determined enemy. His death was a tragedy, but his life is what we must learn from. On Memorial Day, tradition dictates that the stars and stripes are raised briskly to the winds to the top of the staff, and then solemnly lowered to the position of half staff, where it remains only until noon. It is then raised to full staff for the remainder of the day. The half staff position remembers the more than one million women and men who gave their life and their service to this nation. At noon, their man is raised by people like Herbert Miller, who was saved by Chaplain Cuffin. Their pain is deeply rooted, but so also is their resolve to tell their story of their soldier, their battle buddy, their spouse. Every military family lives in perpetual fear of the knock on the door that is accompanied by three service members in blue. There are men and women here and across the country like Herbert, whose lives were never the same after that knock. But they carry on each day, knowing a void only they can endeavor to fill. So many mothers and wives, husbands and fathers, extended family and friends, do their duty every day to ensure their loved one is remembered. They carry on each day with pictures on mantles and mementos of a life not fully lived. They carry on understanding that their soldier chose this life of service, and thus they understood the potential of their death as a sacrifice for the sake of freedom. These men and women left behind, carrying on their soldier's message, raising up their memory like an unfurled flag. Today, we also honor you, for you bear a burden only you can comprehend. We are grateful for the support you gave your soldier so they could carry out the mission of protecting people like my family and your family. We are grateful you are here to carry on the story that, so that we might also know your soldier's bravery. We are grateful for your willingness to come together as a community create a memorial to remember and honor the service of the military. The circle of honor before you represents the contributions and passion of many in individuals here at Valencia Lakes. The association, under the guiding hand of its president, Mr. Nick Fazio, deliberated at length on an appropriate representation of their pride and commitment to those who served in the military and their families. The placement of the flag in the shape of a star represents the unity with the stars of the American flag. The granite central pedestal with the five service insignias demonstrates the support of the military in protecting old glory. 
the solitary black people. In closing, it is our responsibility as citizens to remember the nation's brave fallen men and women, whether they died on foreign lands in the heat of battle or after a lifetime of service in the uniform of our military. Never forget the men and women who know all too much the cost of our freedom, for their service to this country is the greatest gift of all. of uh, the meaning of Memorial Day. If you would honor me uh, with replacing the wreath, the President's wreath up on next to the memorial. nation colors. Hey. 
Please be seated. Mr. Peter, Peter Adams will uh, give the closing remarks. Thank you, fellow residents of Valencia Lakes, and particularly I'd like to thank Marissa and Yale Holmes for their uh, total commitment to having provided this wonderful setting for all of us. was key to this happening the way it was. Uh, for this time forward, the Military Veterans Club is taking charge of the maintenance of this, this particular facility of this Circle of Honor. And as most of you are aware, we're continuing to take on the task of inserting memorial bricks in the Circle of Honor as my fellow residents make that decision. Today is a day of special interest to many who are veterans of this country. In the 19th century and certainly in the 20th, the last part of the induction swearing in in the U.S. military is the individual promises and swears they will protect the Constitution and they will defend the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. In recent months, that word domestic enemy has come home to roost and will probably be with us for some time. The fallen of our various wars lie scattered across the globe in military cemeteries and foreign lands and of course across the fields of this country who basically have died in combat serving this country. If those people, that special few who fall within that category would briefly rise at this moment. And I'd like you to picture in your mind's eye, those friends of yours, your members of the family, as they were when they were cut, their life was cut short. The exuberance of youth, in fact, many of them showed absolutely no fear. And yet they drew the short straw. So we honor them particularly, and those of you who remember them, I ask you in your mind's eye again to remember them as they were then full of the vibrance of youth and the exuberance of that. And essentially, uh, that's the way I remember them, not as a line of tombstones and crosses scattered across the world. Thank you very much. Concludes our program. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out here today making it very special for the community and for our club. God bless America.